first thing I did was cut this automatic altitude compensating device completely out of the picture. Now these two blocks with all the venting tubes going to them just simply vent under the hood just like this. And that right there is essentially gonna give you the richest driving conditions because now it's venting under the hood and now the faster you go the more air is going to be pushed into them vents and creating just a bit of a positive pressure under the hood so basically the faster you go the higher the atmospheric pressure will be under the hood and it'll actually aid a little bit in pushing fuel in the jets so the faster you go the richer the thing runs although i haven't it, it's not like it starts chugging or anything it still goes and that's just the way I would personally like it. In my eyes, you're going to have less chances of popping it. But in a nutshell, what this thing does is basically just adjust where the, vent, where the carburetors vent to. Either into the airbox or under the handlebars. And if you're venting under the handlebars, you're going to have the opposite effect of venting under the hood. Where the faster you go, the less atmospheric pressure there will be. It's just something about the air whooshing past here. It starts to almost want to create negative pressure on stuff, kind of. I don't know. I'm, I don't know a heck of a lot about that stuff. But I just know that if it's venting out here, the faster you go, the less atmospheric pressure at the carburetor bowls, I guess. So the faster you go, the leaner the sled will be running. And then it could also divert it into the airbox. The airbox venting actually doesn't care how fast you're going. From my understanding, it only cares about how much the throttle is open. So the more throttle you give it, the less atmospheric pressure will be in there. And the less overall amount of fuel will make it through the jets. So then they just put a little bit bigger jets and do that. But it's kind of confusing to me how... Be honest i'm not 100 percent sure why they would choose venting between those two things you would think they would choose between either one of these and under the hood because that would give you my eyes more range of adjustment from fuel mixture but regardless i have no idea <laughs> so i better just stop yammering on about it i just bypass that and vented her under the hood for maximum rich condition that helped quite a bit it no longer would refuse to get above 20k. You could go as fast as you wanted with it, although it still just had a bit of a bog. Now we'll jump back in time and show you the second thing I did to get this thing running better. She was still just didn't have the snap that she should, so I went ahead. Of course, I did this off camera, but I'll show you what I did. So I popped this needle out of here, and in order to do that, you gotta hold the spring up here out of the way, push up on the needle like this. And that'll get rid of the little plate that holds the needle down and holds your throttle cable in there. Pop our needle out. You can see how that throttle cable is in there. Eh? This detent here is what sits in the holder for the plunger. So that little ball at the top of the deal there should be above, just like that. Here's our fuel metering needle for the main jet. You can see this little clip here. Well, that's your stop for your needle, right? Sitting in that plunger. It used to be way up here on the second last slot, which makes the needle sit further down in the jet, which restricts more fuel and thus making a leaner fuel air mixture. So I went ahead and moved this clip all the way down to the bottom most slot there, as you can see. And that just richened her up pretty well perfect, man. She actually uh, seems to run pretty good now. All right, back to two weeks in the future. I decided to take this thing for a rip. You know, it was all running great. Thought everything was figured out. And then I took it into some fresh powder. We just had a fresh snow that night. It was actually still snowing when I went for this ride. And I noticed the second that that powder started flying around all over the place, my sled started bogging out. Basically just acting like it was sucking up snow. And that's when I noticed I had zero air filterage underneath here the filter that sits under there it still had this filter although it was ripped right here so that wouldn't help matters any but to be honest i don't think this filter does very much for filtering out that fine powder it's the filter under here that actually does all the work so i went ahead and dug out this old foam mattress thing and cut myself out perfect rectangle section to go under that piece and i know it looks rough but it has zero problems with sucking in powder anymore although unfortunately it was that bumpy kind of foam so i thought that might ruin the whole thing and still suck in powder but it doesn't it works great so you know i had a suspicion this would happen but 
as soon as I started up the sled, I could tell right away that this thing was running way too rich now with that filter in there. I guess I should point out that obviously this bed foam isn't going to be exactly the same density as an actual good quality filter that's supposed to be in there. <laughs> I realize that, okay? So I adjusted the fuel metering needles down two clips. So two clips leaner and that made the sled run just absolutely perfect. I was I was worried that, that this might not work and either I'd have to change my jets or find a proper air filter. Just simply dropping those needles down two clips was all she needed. Now keep in mind that those clips are still adjusted one clip higher or richer than they were when I first got the sled. So either I didn't have to touch these fuel metering needles at all and just had to get an air filter or it still would have been running lean if it had a filter and I would have still had to adjust these one richer. I'm sorry if I'm not making sense, but I, this is just stuff that's going through my head. I wish I would have knew that filter wasn't in there. I'm just starting to wonder if I maybe didn't even have to touch these. Although, like I said, there's still one richer than I originally got the sled, so I think I still had to play with them a little bit. I guess altogether, main three things I should say now that really got my sled to run perfect was getting an air filter in there, adjusting my fuel metering needles up a total of one clip, and bypassing that altitude compensator, and that got me a good sled. Put down the pitchforks. Yes, I already bought three new carb boots. Now understand that this was not supposed to be permanent. As soon as I found out this thing actually runs, I went and ordered these three carb boots and they actually just came in the other day. So now I gotta take it all apart and put those new boots on, which I may or may not record. I don't know yet. It's kind of boring, I guess, but, but so far they're working perfect. Mm -hmm.